All right, so like, yo, I've been reacting to like a lot of Snow the product, right? And again, I don't have any clue who she is as a person or what she was doing before the first song I heard from her, basically. I don't really know much about her life like that, um, other than what can be seen like in her, her like modern like vlogs and shit like that. But, um, yo, um, if this interests you, yo, just hang out with me for a little bit, yo. Um, yo, let's, let's check it out. Before Snow the product would drop tracks like Going Off, Let You Go, and Waste of Time, which now has more than 16 million views on YouTube. Before she would work with Tech 9 Ty Dolla Sign, Lupe Fiasco, and more. Before Snow would garner over 600,000 subscribers on YouTube, over 2 million on Facebook, over 160k on Twitter, and a million followers on Instagram at the time of this recording. Snow has been in the game for over a decade now starting off selling mixtapes on the street in San Diego and battle rapping with her friends. She dropped out of college to pursue her rap dream and started to gain a buzz through freestyle and remix videos online. Her unmatched flow and refreshing energy was something the game needed. Eventually, she would gain more notoriety and sign a record deal. And for most people, that's where the story ends. But Snow's is a little bit different. Right. What's up, good people out there? I hope you're having one heck of a day. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on when you're watching this. My name is Jeremy Hecht, a.k.a. Mr. Hectacular. Okay. Actually, no one has ever called me probably that. Probably not. But today, dude. probably not. That's who I am. And anyways, I'm here for you today on Before They Were Famous. And today, I'll be taking you through the life and career of Snow the Product prior to fame. I've covered other artists like Anderson Pack and Comethazine, so be sure to check those out after you finish watching this one if you like it. And as always, be sure to let me know in the comments down below who to cover next. Without any more talking, let's get, it. Let's get, it, bro. Let's let's get, get it, bro. to it. Man, that photo of Rihanna is hilarious, bro. That shit is hilarious, homie. Mm. <laughs> All right, let's hey, get it. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. Boom! Snow the Product was born Claudia Alexandra Feliciano on June 24, 1987 in San Jose, California. Both of her parents were, 87, okay. were undocumented Mexican immigrants and on her song Woke Wednesday she raps, I'm the product of illegals, I'm a hundred like C notes. And she told DJ Booth, at the end of the day I'm just some Mexican girl that wants to impact other Mexican girls. Honorable. So I just wanted to be what I didn't see when I was growing up was a representation of some Mexican chick rapping. She took ESL classes growing up and became fluent in both English and Spanish. And in high school, she even learned how to speak a third language. Tagalog, yeah, man. I only learned how to... Tagalog. That is a strange... Well, not, that's not strange, but like, it's a weird thing to just, just want to pick up. You know what I'm saying? What is it? The, uh, the native language of the Philippines, right? Bro. Asked to go to the restroom and then I would just ditch after that. <laughs> so I learned how to say, you know, may I please go to the restroom? First of all, shout out to that <laughs> interviewer for doing his research. I appreciate that. Secondly, I did the exact same thing in my French class. I took eight years of French and by the end, the only thing I could say was, can I go to the bathroom, please? I also <laughs> Basically, yo, I tried to learn um, Mandarin Chinese like that. And yeah, that's about right, dude. Sat next to can I, how do you, uh, how do I find the bathroom, please? The only two French speakers in class, so they help me with my homework from time to time, or every assignment. Snow's mother learned English from a Filipino woman who she worked uh, with. And that's why she wanted to learn that language. Snow says her mom has a bit of a different accent now because of that. Her dad was around for most of her childhood growing up, but she says her father is no longer in her life. Snow says that he taught her certain morals and values that she continues to represent in her music. When she was three years old, she was singing around the house, and at the young age of six, Snow was rocking out school talent shows. Her dad would also take her to local bars and tell her that if she wanted to become a singer and make some money, then she should practice singing in front of people, even if she was a little bit underage. That exact reference that he's making here, or that, or that her father made to her, right? is the exact method of success and failure basically like um if you want to do something and specifically if it involves people you need to be around people and do it because if you don't then you'll you know fail literally once you step on stage 
She even performed vocals for her grandfather's mariachi band in Redwood City. Originally, she thought about wanting to be a singer and later writing a book or a movie. But it was when she moved to San Diego with her family that she first fell in love with hip hop. She started to listen to more rap and R&B music and it changed her whole life. Musically, she's influenced by rappers and artists with their own original style, including some of the greats like Missy Elliott, DeBrat, Pun, Lauryn Hill. Yo, Big Pun is in my top three, bro. R.I.P. Pun, yo. Aaliyah, Amy Winehouse, Andre Three Stacks, Luda, Johnny Cash, Eminem, Busta Rhymes, Tupac. Johnny Cash is a random reference, but I feel you. Mac Dre, Tech Nine, and more. She was yo, R.P. Mac Dre, yo. Also inspired by Selena. As a teenager, she started Selena, to freestyle yo. with her friends. Her boyfriend at the time was rapping, but Snow says he wasn't very good, so she thought, I could do better than all these guys. She started to write her own raps, and one day, she rapped it in front of the whole crew, and they lost it. In an interview with Latina Magazine in 2012, she said, I actually just stumbled into it. My friends were all doing freestyling and doing music. I was really that girl who always had her headphones on. I really liked music, but I didn't think I'd make my own. But then, I started freestyling, and then battling. Then I put my stuff on MySpace, and people liked it, and I liked doing it, so I just kept doing it. MySpace, RIP MySpace, yo. Doing it. She told Snoop in an interview that the first beat she ever rapped on was Jay Quan's Hood Hop, a classic. Also, it is a classic hood hop. Um, so, early 2000s. Where is Jay Quan these days? Because Tipsy has to be a top 10 song of the 2000s. Yeah, it was. When I was like 17, I was like, this is it. I want to do this. I want to rap. I want to battle. I want to battle guys. I want to show them that I'm just as good as. She looks completely different. It doesn't even look like her. Them at rapping and this, uh, uh, yeah. She footage. cites persistence as a big reason why she made it to where she is today. Because she just kept going. Could it be contouring potentially? She would sell her CDs in San Diego and says no one was buying them. The cops even took her CDs. And that wasn't her only run in with the law though because at one point she was in juvenile detention center for a short period of time, about a month. But she did say that her trouble with the law has not prevented her from making it across the Canadian border. So shout out to us in Canada. She also ran track in high school and at one point she held the record for her school's best mile time which was in the six minute mile range. She was also president of her school's Latina club growing up where she got to speak on issues that were affecting her community. And that activism has continued throughout her career as she's been passionate about issues regarding immigration, politics, and more, and has never been afraid to speak up about what matters to her. Respectable. Yeah, I've noticed that like in a couple of her songs, she, she's extremely like uh, politically motivated, um, respectable. You find she has a cause, she fights for her cause. I love it. On being outspoken and political, to the westward she said, I am one of the artists who was very outspoken about a lot of things and political shit and activism shit, and I've always been very outspoken, to my own detriment, to where there's people that are trying to capitalize now and trying to be the face of that. It's like, dude, don't use this stuff as your platform. You're supposed to use your platform for this stuff. Snow continued to make music, and when Snow was 18, she did her first show at a small venue. But the venue was packed. She was really nervous, but once she got on stage, she killed it. And as soon as like it was time for me to rap, like I just went and I did it, and I blacked out. Like I just all I don't remember anything except for just rocking it. And then after after everybody was like coming up to me, like oh my god. Even though she had decided on rap as a career, her mom pushed her to go to college. So after high school, she attended San Diego Mesa College, where she was studying to become a social worker. But soon into her college, so basically what she was studying for is basically in the exact wheelhouse of um, her activism and the type of. And things like that, basically. I feel you. College career. At the age of 19, she dropped out to pursue her dream of music. She realized that she could help more people who were going through a tough time with her music yep. than if she were to help people individually one at a time through yeah, social, work. social career. She's yeah. dealt with depression and anxiety throughout her whole life and started to put down her thoughts about life into songs to help her vent. I feel good that even if I, I changed a couple people's lives, that's dope. Cause when I wanted to be a social worker, that's all I wanted to do. So now I get to do it via and having fun and tweeting and shit. Her friends Jill and Lisa convinced her to pursue her rap dream. And Lisa actually helped put up money for Snow to record her first demo. Once she decided to go after music wholeheartedly, she knew she needed a rap name and turned to the good old reliable Disney Channel for inspiration. <laughs> Snow White was her original moniker, but she later added on the product. 
She says, when I used to dream about making it, I would talk about it with one friend, and we would think it would be something like a fairy tale. We joked about what princess we'd be, like what Disney one we'd be. I had dark hair and light skin, so I became Snow White. Some people think I'm referencing something bad, but no, not really. It's from a princess. The product was because I wanted to kind of make sure that this didn't take on my whole life. You know, I'm still Claudia, I'm still down to earth. I'm not always like when I'm rapping or performing. She was going by Snow White the product until Disney forced her to change the name. She told Hip Hop DX, considering that they make kids movies. <laughs> Yo, Disney goes after everybody, bro. They sure got some rough and tough lawyers. In 2008, she dropped her first mixtape titled Raising the Bar, and she became known as one of the best new lyrical rappers out. Her flow was unmatched and her punchlines were crazy. At first, she was also recording songs in Spanish, and they must have been pretty good because they caught the ears of Mexican artist Jamie Cohen, who recorded the song Al Gawain with her. I think I'm pronouncing that right, but if I'm not, let me know in the comments. It was off of his 2009 album and became very popular in Mexico, even being played on the radio there. She was going by the name Claudia White on the track and says she doesn't curse at all when she raps in Spanish because she knows her whole family will understand it. In I noticed that. In 2010, Snow moved to Fort Worth, Texas. Soon after she moved there, one of the first opportunities to show off her skills on the mic was at the Murder Worth Mic Pass, where she was asked to be a part of a track. And even though okay. it was more of a like locally thing, like Murder Worth, which is Fort Worth, and it's it's a smaller town in Texas, um, I felt happy to be, you know, because I had just moved there. That same year, she released the mixtapes Run Up or Shut Up and Wake Your Game Up to start creating a buzz. She says she recorded the tapes in her garage. Snow was set on being herself and not conforming to an industry that categorized many of their female rappers as either overtly sexual or pop stars. But she stuck to her original style and no matter what, she said, I want to show girls, especially those into hip hop, that you can be yourself and be good. People, especially girls, do some crazy stuff to call attention to themselves. In yep. 2010, Snow released her clothing line. Yo, she's correct. Go listen to that new, um, the new artist, uh, PP Cocaine, and you'll understand fully what the hell she's talking about, bro. Line called Woke. I know what you're thinking. I didn't use that word until 2016. Exactly. While you may use it as a condescending term on Twitter today, Snow actually claims to have invented the term. And she might have a point. It has always been about being aware, being awake, mm -hmm. being conscious, being cognizant. But it was more about take advantage of these opportunities that we have right now because there is so much up going on. She actually had the word trademarked at one point, recently telling Billboard, I could literally talk to anybody face to face and talk about how that was a clothing line I've had since that long ago, even before Woke registered really on Google. There's Google Trends to prove it. It's been dope and it's been awesome and obviously it's bigger than me now. The word Woke itself has become its own thing now. I'm aware enough to be like, that's dope, the world knows, go do that shit. I feel you. In 2011, she recorded her debut project, Unorthodox. She said she recorded that in her garage as well, but two songs in particular off the project started bubbling online, with Drunk Love and Woke Wednesday going viral. The songs now have 2.6 million and 1.9 mil views on YouTube, respectively. She created a street team to help push her music and called them the product pushers. The name ended up evolving and it became the name of I see a lot of you guys tagging that in my comments. I feel you, bro. Respect. Her fan base. I want to shout out all my product pushers out there. If you're a product pusher, thank you very much. Um, you know that I love you. She started dropping freestyles on YouTube to popular songs from ASAP and Schoolboy Q, garnering a solid online fan base. But her videos for Till Death and Cookie Cutter is really took off and have 7 and 9.7 .7 million views respectively. In December of 2012, she released her mixtape, Good Nights and Bad Mornings, with singles like Cookie Cutter is Damn It and Lord Be With You. Even though she was seeing more success, her mom still wasn't convinced that rapping was a real career. When speaking on the project, she said, If I literally talk to my mother right now, she would tell me that um, photography is not a real career, right? Even though it's taken me to, you know, 152 different uh, countries. Um, <laughs> she doesn't, they don't, parents just don't understand. I'm quoting a, a, an old Will Smith and Jazzy, Jazzy Jeff song now. Parents just don't understand, bro. <laughs> I have another song called Doing Fine where I'm really just saying, I may be f***ing up and I may be partying and doing all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. And my mom may think my rap career is a joke, but I'm doing fine. I'm paying the bills with music money and I'm being a responsible adult. 
as much as I can be. I'm doing fine. I completely feel her because my mom still doesn't think doing these YouTube videos is a real career, but... Exactly. Parents just do not understand, bro. The millions of people out there watching would disagree. So take that, mom. Just joking. <laughs> my mom is very supportive and I love her. She released a sequel in 2013 called Good Nights and Bad Mornings 2, The Hangover, with features from Tech 9 Trey the Truth, Sai the Prince, Ty Dolla Sign, and more. But her first big break came with her song Holy Sh**. She was ahead of the wave on releasing short songs because it was a verse that was only a minute 30 long. The song was featured on ThisIs50.com and even caught the attention of three record labels, Sony, Universal, and Atlantic. I mean, some of it really, it's just ranting. My holy shit video, that's just me getting stuff off my chest. It's sometimes very hard for a girl like me in this industry, whether it be because of gender, race, or something else, and the fact that I'm not comfortable selling some sort of sex image. She eventually signed to Atlantic Records and prepared to release her debut studio album in 2013. And that's where the story would end for a lot of artists. I would say as for the rest of the story, well, you know it because this is before they were famous. But for Snow, things were a little bit different. Okay. She went through some label trouble and began a whole new journey recently. She told DJ Booth in a recent interview that Atlantic was trying to make her into something that she wasn't. And for an artist who has always been so set on being herself, okay. there was some friction. I don't need writers, I don't need the whole fluff thing. I need to just be real with my fans. I'm not the type of artist you can put together and put into a box. I just fit better on my own. Also stating, I knew nobody was ever going to take care of me. I always moved independently, even on the label. Respect. I do feel that learning everything not to do is probably the biggest lesson I learned. She also eventually bought herself out of her management deal because of problems. She actually cites her interview with The Breakfast Club as one of the moments that made her re Wait, she was on The Breakfast Club? I should check that out. Realized she needed to change some things up in her career. Yes, you, I feel you, you, amazing. You wouldn't quit your job. Yes, <laughs> y'all made me quit my job. <laughs> and since Woke took on a life of its own online, a lot of people confused her brand for something that it wasn't. So recently, Snow created a new brand and label called Vibe Hire. Telling LA Weekly, Vibe Hire came because I've had Woke forever. There was obviously drama with Woke and the word and the fact that I own a trademark and all these crazy things. To me, it was getting very annoying that people thought I made a brand based off of anything other than me knowing how to build a brand. So I was like, we're gonna vibe above this and we're not gonna fight things. We're gonna move up and show people what we do. And hopefully the internet doesn't take Vibe Hire and ruin it like they do with a lot of things. In 2015, <laughs> she released The Rest Comes Later, and in 2016, had a spot on the Hamilton mixtape. They even- Yeah, that song Immigrant was crazy, bro. Released a video for the song Immigrants, We Get the Job Done. In 2017, she dropped her EP Halfway There, also dropping the Vibe Higher mixtape as a collective with the artist she signed. Snow also has done some acting, appearing in the TV series Queen of the South as Lil Travisa. For those of you who don't know, Snow was married for a long time, but kept things out of the public eye because she says her partner was a private person. However, he did star in her most popular music video for a waste of time, so around 14 million people have seen him. She says the two were together for almost a decade, but recently the two separated. In an interview with Hot 97, she said, I divorced a whole man because he was a Trump supporter. It was a, it was a lot that piled up, to be that honest. Is. She says that the breakup was what's best for both of them. The two have a child together and they continue to co-parent. Snow says she loves being a mom and providing her kid with a great life, but told Power 106 that she makes him work for his own Fortnite clout and doesn't want him to just buy all the items through his mom's money. After going through some time to heal and to figure out what she wanted next in her life, Snow met her current girlfriend Juju in New York. This chick with curly hair looked like she had the worst f***ing attitude in life. Like, <laughs> just automatically looked like she had a bad attitude and I was like, I'm into that. Being raised in a traditional Mexican and religious family, she said that coming out as bisexual to her mother and brother wasn't as hard as she thought it would be. <laughs> they were super supportive, but it was more difficult to explain things to her extended family. To me, when I'm dating somebody, like that's what I am. Like if I'm with a guy, I am with a guy, I like right. him, you know, right. and if I'm with a girl, then I like her. Currently, Snow lives in Los Angeles and she is working on new music independently for her fans, consistently putting out dope music videos that are doing numbers on her YouTube channel. They are. Her brother, cousin, and family are involved in her actual career and are on her team to help. So she has close connection rather than what she had before with her management company. She has also been consistently touring with the artists from her new label, Vibe Higher. I literally wake up excited again and happy. To me, that's the biggest thing. I'm a mom and I have an eight year old who looks up to me. I'm supposed to tell him he can follow his dreams and shouldn't try to fit into a box that normal America is supposed to be. 
Yo, she is super respectable, bro. I want him to be greater, and I can't say that freely without doing that 100% honestly myself. In terms of advice to others, she told Billboard, take your time. Everybody may be trying to rush to find their identity, but it will happen in due time. It was a decade long journey for Snow to get to this point, and honestly, I'm just happy because in all of her recent interviews, she just seems free, happy, and ready to start again. And as for the rest of the story now, well, you know it because this is before they were famous. My name is Jeremy Hecht, and as always, let us know in the comments down below who we should cover next for this channel. Subscribe, notification button on, follow me on Instagram at Jeremy underscore Hecht, follow Michael at McCrud and M. Okay, listen, from what I've learned today is that Snow is extremely driven. Um, she works hard, she is respectable, uh, she loves her family. She has worked hard for so long that it is guaranteed that she will reach some form of success. Dude, work hard until you're recognized. Like, <laughs> dude, listen, continue telling me to listen to more of her music and I will continue listening to it. I support her. Uh, every venture that she has, literally, period. Right? Um, you guys have an amazing day. Um, enjoy it.